Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the launch of a fascinating and important paper between chaos and control. Uh, and welcome to the 50 or so people who we have in the room here at ODI in London, and also welcome to possibly as many as 250 of you who are listening and taking part online around the world. Uh, my name is Jane Cocking and I am uh, privileged and it's a pleasure to have been invited uh, by Paul to be the chair of the event and when I'm not chairing events at ODI I'm humanitarian director at Oxfam GB based in Oxford in the UK. So I would just like to extend a very warm welcome and tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. Uh, Paul is going to present the report in summary, which you all have in front of you. And then we are going to, uh, rather than have a direct commentary, uh, we're then going to have a discussion involving uh, the two guests on my left and right, who I will introduce in a moment, uh, following which there will be ample opportunity for questions, comments, thoughts, challenges, whatever you would like, both from the floor in the room and also from uh, colleagues and friends online. So that sounds to me like an excellent um, hour and a half. Uh, our apologies that we are starting a little later than uh, some had originally planned. There was a bit of a glitch on communication about timing, but uh, I think we're all now gathered together and very happy to be so. Um, the topic of leadership in humanitarian response and in the humanitarian sector as a whole is an extremely important one. The messy and chaotic circumstances that millions of people find themselves in every year really demand of those of us who attempt to support, help, and accompany people through those crises that we do things as well as we possibly can. And for many years, it's been very clearly recognized that uh, leadership in those circumstances is not only difficult, but it is also quite often the defining characteristic uh, between a successful operation and response which saves lives and supports people as they regain their dignity and choice as they come through crises, between the success of that and possibly failure. And so that we should devote time to thinking through what does that leadership mean is not only uh, interesting and important, it's absolutely essential. And certainly from my own work and colleagues within Oxfam, we have been absolutely delighted to uh, be part of the research that Paul knox Clark from ALNAP has, uh, has led and presents to us. Uh, because I think it is complicated and Paul, with his extraordinary talent for bringing logic and rigor to the most difficult of topics has really helped us with it. But it's not only uh, a, a structure, humanitarian leadership is not only a management discipline, it's, it's a core value. And from our own experience, where the difficulties come is not only when we get the structures wrong, but when there is tension and passion in knowing whether or not we need to uh, do the thing right, whether we need to follow the correct process or whether we need to do the right thing, even if that means bending the process sometimes. And I think the report highlights and draws out those tensions wonderfully. And so I'm looking forward very much indeed both to hearing Paul and to hearing what others have to say. So let me just introduce the rest of, of, of the panel here. On my right um, is Chris Kay, and on my left is Steve uh, Goodsward. 
Now, before I introduce uh, Chris and Steve in a little more detail, we were just talking earlier and saying that in so many ways we are, and this is, that we're being possibly slightly arrogant here, but it's really not. Um, we are representative of how the humanitarian sector works uh, because we all sat round tables together about 10 years ago um, in Johannesburg when we were all doing different jobs for respective organisations in Southern Africa, where Chris was leading uh, organisational coordination in something that uh, only the very, the very aficionados of, of the humanitarian <laughs> sector will remember, perhaps, because it is a while ago, REACSO, which was the Regional Interagency Coordination and Security Officer. Wasn't Support, it? Office. Support office. Support office. Right. Yeah. I knew I was going to get it wrong. <laughs> and um, and we both, we all three of us, remember that very experience very positively, because we had a common vision, common ideas, and clear leadership. And so it's it's with that very warm experience that the three of us are sitting here today. Um, Chris uh, is now. And I'm going to have to read this very carefully because I, I know getting people's job titles wrong is deeply uh, uncomfortable. Is now Director of Performance and Accountability Management for WFP based in Rome. He has extensive experience within the NGO sector and then uh, for the last more than 20 years within the UN system, uh, both within OCHA and since 2006 with WFP, where he has worked extensively in more countries and more crises than, than I can really take time to describe. But in particular, recently, um, he, has, he, was, uh, um, he was within the leadership of uh, the response to Cyclone Haiyan in the Philippines, and he has also recently taken part in the OPR, in the, in the peer review of South Sudan. And so he brings immense experience and also experience not only of doing it but also reflecting on leadership so we are very grateful um, we are also incredibly lucky to have Steve Goodswart who has come from Melbourne Australia to be part of the discussion and Steve has been with World Vision for 22 years I think and is now director of operations for Asia and the Pacific uh, but um, may not be speaking extensively from experience of that post, as I understand you've only been doing it for a week. Um, <laughs> however, rather more, uh, rather more relevantly, perhaps, to, to the discussion today, um, Steve was director of World Vision's Global Rapid Response Team uh, between 2005 and 2011, and uh, project manager of World Vision's Emergency Response System and Development of Leaders in Emergencies. Uh, for three years up until he took over his current post. So again, he brings an immense amount of experience and thought. Um, and we will look forward very much to hearing Chris and Steve in future. But now I would just like to introduce, I can't possibly welcome, um, Paul Knox Clark, uh, who is now Head of Research and Communications at ALNAP, but previously worked extensively with Save the Children and with WFP. And as my management team and I know very effectively, he established a consultancy called Oxford Change Management, which supported uh, numerous management teams struggling with the issues of leadership in humanitarian response. And I know from personal experience, his ability to work with a team and hold up a mirror to us and point out in the most charming, polite and witty way where our failings were and what we needed to do to resolve them is uh, exemplary. And so that you've now turned that mirror more broadly on the sector is something we are very uh, grateful for. So Paul, I will hand over to you to present the report.